<laughs> we have witnessed history today, friends of human spaceflight and friends of the technological progress of humanity. Starship Flight Test 5 was a giant success. I don't even know where to start. Basically, everything went flawlessly. So let's go through the flight and recap the most important moments and of course what this means for the future of Starship, SpaceX and for the future of human spaceflight and of humanity. Okay, so this was a grandiose day for anyone who is positive about the future technological development of humanity. But of course a bad day for the DGENs who have been calling for Starship to fail for years now. Anyways, so the Starship Super Heavy Booster took off today at shortly before 8.30 am Eastern Daylight Time from Starbase Texas and what can I say, everything went flawlessly. All engines fired up nominally, they burned continuously without any engines failing. Starship was rising up into the air and 2 minutes and 38 seconds after liftoff, at an altitude of about 70 kilometers, the separation process of Starship and Super Heavy took place. Or better, the hot staging separation, wherein the Starship engines fire up briefly to push itself away from the booster. This process also went pretty much flawlessly. The Super Heavy booster started falling back to Earth, whereas the Starship continued its coasting suborbital flight trajectory towards the Indian Ocean. Now we could witness some insanely impressive stuff here, the importance of which cannot be overstated. While Starship was still on its way to its target destination in the Indian Ocean, Super Heavy was falling towards the surface as planned. It looked completely surreal. I sometimes have to rub my eyes to verify that this is really happening in real life. One kilometer above the surface of Starbase then, the Super Heavy booster ignited its inner Raptor engines, flying towards the launch tower. And it first looked a bit strange, but luckily it was only the perspective. And unbelievably, it landed perfectly, acing the catching process. The Mechazilla chopstick arms of the launch tower caught the Super Heavy booster perfectly. Absolutely incredible. A picture perfect catch. The people at SpaceX ground control went rightfully crazy. The catching of the Super Heavy booster is such an important and essential process of Starship launches because this will be what will allow rapid reusability and a rapid turnaround rate in the future. Meaning you catch the booster and then immediately you can already prepare it for the next launch. This rapid reusability and turnaround is key if we really want to have a self-sustainable city on Mars in the future because we will need many Starship and Super Heavy launches in order to achieve that. And so a quick catching of the booster, restacking with the Starship and refueling will be super important. But it will be also important for orbital refueling. Imagine when we will need to refill a tanker Starship with 6 to 8 Starships. It will be important to do that in a fast manner, not over a time frame of weeks, but ideally in a single day. Because in order to minimize the boil off, we don't want the tanker to be in orbit for a very long time. Anyways, so therefore, catching the super heavy booster was an extremely important milestone which cannot be overstated. It was a giant milestone for SpaceX and for the future of humanity in space. Now, meanwhile, Starship was continuing its suborbital coasting towards the Indian Ocean, and after about 45 minutes at an altitude of 100 kilometers, the friction with the atmosphere started, and we started witnessing the famous plasma glow of atmospheric re entry due to the friction heat. So, the glow continued intensifying as Starship passed into night time. A truly magnificent and beautiful sight. This process was then finished at an altitude of around 36 kilometers. Starship had then been sufficiently slowed by the atmospheric friction that no plasma was generated anymore as the temperature had dropped sufficiently as well. But now the most important thing. It looked as if the heat shield this time held much better than last time. In the last flight, there was no damage to the heat shield or to the flaps visible. The new flap and heat shield configuration really paid off. Then the final descent happened. Starship ignited and landed in the target zone on the surface of the ocean. 
This here is the view from a nearby buoy which floated at the target zone. In the end, we got an explosion and this was to be expected, considering that after the ship had landed perfectly, in a vertical manner, of course afterwards it was tilting massively onto its side and the engines were being flooded with water as well and of course the damage from falling onto the side onto the water certainly wasn't good for the starship. So this entire thing was just a, a massive success, okay? A massive success, it cannot be overstated. Every single one of the important milestones had been met. 1. The launch was picture perfect with no failed engines. 2. The hot staging separation was perfect. 3. The catching of the booster was perfect. 4. Atmospheric re-entry of Starship went flawlessly. Better than in Flight 4, because this time the heat shield tiles withstood the re-entry heat and nothing seemed to have been damaged. The flaps looked perfect without damage as well. 5. Starship hit the target landing zone and managed to land vertically on the water surface in a controlled manner. So now that all these target milestones have been met, it is of course clear that next launch, Integrated Flight Test 6, will probably push the boundaries even more. We will quite likely see Starship land vertically on land. The question is just if Starship will round the Earth and land back at Starbase, or if there will be a designated landing zone somewhere. I would guess that they will try to land it back in Texas. However, for that of course, SpaceX will need an orbital launch license. Which, after this perfect launch, will be much more likely to get than if something would have gone majorly wrong. The next launch could take place as early as December. Now, will there already be a payload aboard? I think quite likely not, because the goal will be to land Starship back in one go at a designated landing zone. But hey, who knows, maybe SpaceX will surprise us. All in all, this was an important milestone for the aforementioned reasons of rapid reusability, but also for the reasons that it is now much more likely that SpaceX will receive future launch licenses faster and will also receive the orbital launch license sooner as well. Therefore, Starship can launch the next generation Starlink satellite sooner. Therefore, the SpaceX revenue will increase even more. Thus, more Starships can be built and thus these can launch more often and then start with the crucial testing of orbital refueling, which will be a quintessential step in order for Starship to land on the Moon and in the future also on Mars. This today, folks, make no mistake, was a historical day. Okay, a, his a historical day. We witnessed space history being made here and future generations will look back on this day as we look now back to the first Saturn V launches in the 1960s. But the difference is that Space Access Starship Super Heavy System will be even more, much more, much more transformative than the Saturn V because of its full reusability, thus bringing down the costs for reaching orbit, the Moon, and then lastly Mars by many orders of magnitude. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please like and subscribe, because we'll continue putting out lots of videos on fascinating technological developments. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership, because this would allow us to make more and better videos. Thank you so much in advance. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are, have a nice day and see you next time.